One. There we go. Ooh. Okay. So 12 1 is, or not 12, 13 1 is exponential growth, and 13 2 is exponential decay. Okay, so the two functions that I gave for you today as a warm up were growths. Okay, so what can you tell me about a growth? It gets bigger, exactly. Okay, so very simply, an exponential function is something that grows and gets bigger and bigger and bigger exponentially. Okay, so one thing that I would like for you to write down is this right here. Yeah, write that down. Do you want me to zoom in? Okay, so it says a times b to the x minus h plus k. Okay, so I'm going to talk about these, uh, each of these letters really quickly, and then we'll uh, do a little bit of graphing. Okay, um, so according to the warm-up today, remember the first one was 2 times 4 to the x. Okay, so which one was the A value and which one was the B value in that scenario? Do you want me to write it down? So 2 times 4 to the X. Oh, 2 was the A. 2 is the A. So what do we know about the A value? The Y intercept. The Y intercept. Very good. Okay, so the, the A is going to be our Y intercept. Okay, and I'm going to write in here before translation because that's important and I'll explain it to you here in a second okay what is the B the slope, the slope. basically the idea slope. of the slope okay now I'm not gonna say slope I'm gonna call this the growth factor but it is directly related to the slope idea basically how steep this function gets Okay, now if you see a B value that's bigger than 1, that's going to be a growth. And a B value that's less than 1 is going to be a decay. Okay, so what I just said to you, you should write down. A B value greater than 1 is a growth. And a B value that's less than 1 is a decay. Okay, what is the what is the H? Tell me. Okay, this is the same H that we've been talking about on every single function that we've done. The H and K moves the function which direction? Left and right. Very good. Okay, so this is your left and right movement. So what does the K do? Yeah. Up and down. Perfect. Okay, so just to be aware, left and right is what kind of a shift? What would the book call horizontal. that? Horizontal. Okay, up and down is a vertical shift. Okay. All right, so let's talk about very quickly what this, um, this base of a 2 versus the base of 10. Okay, so they give us this table, and I'm not generally a fan of tables, but I'm going to fill this out because it's pretty simple. Um, if I'm looking at 2 to the x and 10 to the x, what's the difference between the two? The 2 and 10, and which variable are we talking about? The b. Okay, so we're basically specifically looking at the growth factor. If you have a small growth factor versus a very big growth factor. Okay, 10 being a pretty big growth factor. Of course, it's not giant, but good enough for our needs. All right, so let's fill out this uh, table. If I have a 2 to the negative third, what is 2 to the negative third? What's a negative exponent due to a function, by the way? Down, right? So this would be the same as if I have, if I have 2 to the negative third, that's the same as 1 over 2 cubed, which is the same as 1, at, 1 over 8. What's 1 eighth? Nice. Okay, if I have 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over 2 squared, 
which is one fourth, which is 0.25. Okay, what about two to the negative first power? That's one over two. What's one over two? 0.5, one half is 0.5. What's two to the zero power? One. One, very good. Anything to the zero power is one. Okay, what about two to the first power? Two, two squared? Two cubed? Eight. Okay, so you can see that number's getting bigger and bigger as we go. Okay, so let's do uh, 10 to the, what's 10 to the negative third? Point zero zero one. So what's 10 to the negative two? Zero one. Zero, one. Good. What about 10 to the negative one? Point one. 10 to the first, or zero, excuse me. One. 10 to the first. 10 squared. And a thousand. Okay, so you see what's happening? This is crazy. Okay, so let's say I uh, graph these points just really quickly. Maybe not perfectly, but good enough to see what's happening. So we have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1 is 1 half, 0 is 1, 1 is 2, 2 is 4, 3 is, whoops, 8. Okay, do you see this trend? I did not connect my dots very nicely, but good enough. Okay, so you still see the same exponential growth model as a y-intercept of 1. Okay, so now if we compare this to 10 to the x, watch what happens on this one. So 0 0.001, super close to the x-axis. Yeah, like faster. And then 1 goes to 10 immediately, way up here. And 2 is way off my grid. Okay, so this is like, let's see if I can draw this good. Oh, that wasn't great. <laughs> Very sloppy, but you get the idea, right? Okay, so the bigger the number is, the steeper that curve. Okay. Whoa. Okay, let's talk about these little important pieces. They always ask us, what's the domain? What's the range? What is the domain of both of these? Domain is your x's. How far to the left? Good. Okay, so negative infinity. I'm going to say all reals. Is that all right with you guys? Meaning the same thing? Okay, so same on the 10 to the x. Okay, what about the range? What's the lowest to the top? So now when you say zero, do I include zero? Does it ever actually touch zero? No. So it's greater than zero. So this one is going to be greater than zero. Okay, so... How come it doesn't ever touch zero? You have to get a zero. You can't ever get it, right? So what's happening right on the x-axis for these functions? Is it ever going to hit zero? Is it ever going to go past zero and go on the other side of zero and go negative? No. Okay, so what, what, what that's called when we're thinking about this like invisible line that the function gets infinitely close to but can't cross is a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so remember when we've talked about asymptotes before? Okay, so exponential functions have asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. They're going to get infinitely close to that, but it can't ever touch it or cross. Okay, horizontal asymptotes. So maybe tell yourself, in your notes, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. That's an important idea. Okay, what are our y-intercepts for both of these? One. One, they're both one. Okay, last question. Is this function increasing, decreasing? Does it go up and down? Increasing, decreasing, increasing? What's happening? Decreasing. Strictly increasing, right? Always increasing when we're talking about growths. Okay. All right, so we're going to take that idea and now do one of these that is translated. Okay, so I'm going to identify each of these pieces and then we're going to graph it. And I'll tell you exactly what things I'm looking for. Okay, so the four in the front. What is that? 
the y-intercept. The y-intercept. Okay. And of course, the y-intercept before the translation. I'm not going to write that on there because my hand gets tired of writing. But you know. What does the 2 tell me? Is that a growth or is it a decay? Growth. Growth. And that's all I want you to care about because that tells us what it looks like. Okay. What about up in the exponent if I have plus 2? Plus 2. To the left 2. Nice. Left. Six. 2. Down and six. down 6. Very nice. Okay. So let's talk about that horizontal asymptote that we were talking about. Okay. Now, the horizontal asymptote gets shifted with our shifts. Okay, so now if I take a horizontal asymptote and I shift it to the left 2, is it going to change? No. no, it's going to stay the same because it's going infinitely in both directions. Okay, but what about when I go down 6? It's, now, it's right. now down 6 units, right? So when I'm drawing these exponential functions, the first thing that I'm going to draw is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so I want you to represent those with just a dotted line. So I'm going to go down 6 and just draw this little dotted line that helps me to draw the function. Okay, so it's technically invisible, but I'm going to draw it so you can see it. Okay, second thing you have to draw is the point, a reference point. Okay, the reference point is going to start at whatever your y-intercept is and then go the two translations that we've got. Okay, so if I am up 4, which we're off of our grid by one unit, so up there, do you everybody see it where I'm pointing? <laughs> or do I need to get off my chair? Uh, Everybody's following? Okay. So if you're right there, and then go to the left two, and then down six. Where's my point? Did everybody find it? So from the y-intercept to four, left two, down six. Good there? Okay, so that's the second thing I want to see. Where is your reference point? Third thing, draw the graph. If I'm drawing a growth, it's going to start really, really close to that asymptote and then curl up through that point and just go up from there. Okay, so to the best of your ability, curl that sucker up. Okay, and that's all I'm going to look for. Okay, now we could be more accurate and I could say I want two points. You know, and I could say, okay, well, I'm just going to plug in another number. Like, I'm going to find negative 4, plug that into the function, and see what the corresponding y value is. Okay, and that would be a little bit more accurate. But I'm not going to go that far. I just want you guys to draw your asymptotes, reference point, graph. Fair enough? Okay. Let's make sure we got this. So your line is asymptotes, and what are the other no, it doesn't go through the four. That's where that little point started at. So but then translated. Well, technically not wherever. If I wanted to find exactly where it crossed the y-axis or even the x-axis, I could, if I was going to find the y-intercept, I could plug zero into the x and find exactly where it goes. So, like, that's pretty easy to do mentally even. We plug 0 into the x, we have 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 minus 6 is 10. So my y-intercept would be 10. So, yeah, so I didn't do a great job of drawing this. I should have drawn a little bit steeper graph, but, yeah, you get the point. You get the general gist of the graph. Okay. So if you feel like you want to be more accurate, absolutely go with that. Okay, so number five, what's the negative three-fifths do? Down the this way. So what's my y-intercept? One. Negative three-fifths. Oh. Okay, so it actually starts upside down, but I'm still going to use negative three-fifths. But what does the negative do more than just the y-intercept? What does it do to the whole function? Flips it upside down. Okay, so imagine this, this graph that started at the asymptote and goes up is now flipped upside down. Okay, what does the 10 tell me? Is it a growth or is it a decay? Growth. Okay, what is the plus 2 up in the exponent? 
left two plus three up three good all right so what's the first thing i draw the asymptote that's up three so i go up draw a little dotted line okay now i need my point so i'm going to start it at negative three fifths which is like like negative half ish a little bit more than that okay so negative half here i'll plot this one out Okay, so we're looking right here. Okay, and now I'm going to go my two translations. So I got two to the left, one, two, and up three. One, two, three. So there's my point. Good there? Okay, now how am I going to draw a negative growth? What does it look like? Good, okay, so it starts really close to the asymptote, but on the other side. It starts below. Okay, and this one's going to curl, and it's going to curl hard because it's 10. Right? It's super steep. That one good? Pretty easy? Not bad? Okay, so there's more on this section, but I'm going to go straight into the decays since we're talking about graphing. And just so you can see what the difference is between a growth and a decay, I'm not going to actually fill out this table. Unless you want me to. Can I just use Desmos so you can see what it looks like? So we got the two functions are 1 half to the x and 1 tenth to the x. I might still have this in here. Nope. So 1 half. to the x, and 1 tenth to the x. Okay, so the yellow one is 1 half to the x, and the, what color is that? Black. Yeah, it's actually black. The black one is 1 tenth to the x. So tell me. What do you notice? What does it look like? What are specifics? Same y-intercept. Very good. They both have one. Which, by the way, where did they find the one? The number that's in front. It's still the a value. What is the general look of the graph? It's like exactly opposite, right? So it starts high, and then it goes to the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so a decay is going to get infinitely small, but never zero. Does that make sense, how a function can get infinitely small? So, like, imagine that I was going to just half something. Cut it in half. So if I take this pen and I cut it in half, and then I cut it in half, and cut it in half, and cut it in half, I still have something to cut in half. It's getting smaller, infinitely small, but there's always something. Does that make sense? So that's this idea of cutting something in half or in tenths in this case. Okay, so horizontal asymptote is zero for this. Okay, so now let's go and graph one of these translation ones. If it lets me. There we go. There we go. Okay, so we're going to do the exact same thing as we did with the gross. The only difference is it's going to be a decay. Okay, so what's my 3 out in front? What's that tell me? The y-intercept. Okay, the 1 third tells me the shape of the graph is a decay. Okay, if I have a plus 2 in the exponent, for some reason they, we're not very creative. <laughs> what direction is that one moving? Left 2 again. Left two. What about the minus four? Down. Down four. Okay, so what's the first thing that I would draw? The asymptote. So I draw my little dotted line at the asymptote. Okay. So now I'm going to draw my reference point. Where do I start? Zero. Zero, three. Good. So on the y-axis, I'm at three. So can you see it? Three. And then I'm going to move it my two translated spots. So to the left two down four. 
Where did it land? Negative two, negative two again. Okay, everybody get there? Now what does it look like? How do I draw a decay? So I start at three and go down. Oh, yeah, you're right. Negative two, negative one. Good call. Negative two, negative one. Is that what you guys were all eyeing? Or are you guys just staring blankly at the graph? <laughs> so it's one of those days where it's super hot in here. Do you guys want to take a quick break? Go get a drink, stretch, do some junky. Okay. So if this is a decay, how do I draw it? <laughs> like that. I want to write top to bottom. Yeah, right? Top to bottom. Okay, so you go. Well, I did, yeah. But I drew a growth. So make sure decays go towards your asymptote. Good catch. Okay, so the other part of this is the same thing they always do. Here's a graph. Tell me what the equation is. Okay, so this is kind of interesting specifically to me. I like it when you like have to think about things and it doesn't get boring. But that's just me. Because sometimes math gets a little raw and boring. You know, the system, blah, blah, blah. It's always the same stuff. This is kind of fresh. Okay, so you know our, our general equation is a times b to the x minus h plus k, right? Now, if I'm going to write the equation for this graph right here, if I use the first point, see how there's two points? If I say this point is going to be my reference point, the one that I drew, you remember how I was drawing with the reference point? I can write a completely different equation than if I use the other point. So depending on which of those points I use, I can use two completely different equations. And it will draw the same graph. Cool. Yeah. God, you guys are so boring. Oh, you're <gasps> boring. You're <laughs> boring. Not boring. Okay, tell me what you know about this graph. It's what are the pieces that I know? Less than it's one. Decay. Decay okay, the B value is a decay. It's less than one. What else? I don't know exactly what it is. The k is minus uh, three, four, four, right? The dotted line. So we know the k is negative four. Okay, I'm going to do this two ways. I'm going to do this one first. Okay, so I'm going to say that that's my reference point. So my four is minus eight. So, so what's my h? Did it move left or right? Right, right two. Oh, you're going to do that one. No, the no, top one. Zero. No zero, yeah. So if I use the top of point, there is no H. It's zero. And what is my y-intercept? Uh, four. What is my A value? Four. Remember that that's been translated down four units. Eight. Ten. Right. Okay, so see how it's eight oh, units yeah. above the asymptote? My A value is eight. Place because using that. yeah, I'm using that one. So I am one using it. So I am. From here, from this, no, this blue I'm point. The you just, you just well, I use the bottom point to find the B value. Okay, so if I'm using the top point, it is eight units above my asymptote. Okay, so would it make sense that if I start at 8 and use or move down 4, it would get me to that spot right there? It's like going backwards thinking. Super. Okay, we're all on page. So now, what's what's the ordered pair to the other one? Uh, this two, one. 2, negative 2. 1, negative 2. Close. So what do I do if I have a point and a lot of information? So like what I know right now is the A value is 8. The B I don't know. The h value is 0, and my k value is negative 4. So I have all of the pieces of information except for which one? The b. Six. So I'm going to use the point as an x and a y and plug that into that equation so that I can figure out the b. Whoa. 
let's see. Okay, so negative 2 is equal to 8 times 1 to the x minus 4. What would you do first to solve that? Move over the... Oops, I totally did that wrong. You guys need to check my steps. B is what I don't know. X is 0. Excuse me, I wrote that wrong. Will you still move over the negative 2? Uh, so you add 4. Because I'm solving for B, right? So I have 2. And why is x 0? Good question, Jordan. Why is x 0? x is 1. Because I'm using my point 1, negative 2. I don't know why I put a 0 on there. So 8 times b, and b to the first power is just b. So if I divide by 8, what's my b? 1 fourth. So this equation would be y equals 8 times 1 fourth to the x minus 4. All agreed? Yes, of course. No questions asked. <laughs> Really? Now what if I did it the other way? What if I use this red point as my reference point? If that was my reference point, I still would have a k value that's the same, right? What would my h be? What is my left or right movement? Okay, so it would be negative 1 because it's moving to the right. What would my a value be? 2. All right, 2. Okay, so the easiest way to think about it is how many units above the um, the k value is it? Can we just get rid of the x minus? What? So now, what's the other ordered pair? This one up here at the blue point. That ordered pair is 0, 4. So now I can use that. So I've got y equals 2 b to the x plus 1 minus 4. To solve for the b, I can plug in 0, 4. So that would be 4 equals 2 times b to the 0 plus 1 minus 4. So if I add 4, what's 4 plus 4? 2 times b to the first power. Wait, wait, well, how did I screw that up? Oh, that should have been minus. In the exponent. Because it goes to the right. And I wrote that up there, but I didn't write it down here. So 0 minus 1 to the negative 1. So, what is b to the negative 1 the same as? What happens if you have a negative exponent? What do you do? 1 over b. Yeah, so this would be the same as 8 equals 2 over b. How do you solve for b when it's in the bottom? Flip the flip Okay, so when you say flip, do you mean like switch the 8 and the b? No, like, sure. Sure. <laughs> that works. Why? That is what, yeah, it's right. <laughs> But like, technically, multiply you multiply, well, you like <laughs> multiply the b over, right? So yeah. if it's in the bottom, you would multiply the b. So it would be b times 8 equals 2, and then divide by 8. See what I'm saying? So it's 2 eighths. 1 fourth. What was the b we got last time? 1 fourth. We're just making stuff up. So the equation would be y equals 2 times 1 fourth to the x minus 1 minus 4. So do you think those two are the exact same equation? Oh, yeah. How would we figure that out? Obviously. Decimals? Decimals. Clearly, we would just graph them and see. And if they match, they're the same. So 8 1 fourth x. Okay, do you guys remember that? Yeah. 
Minus four. Yeah, because remember it was down. And then two one fourth x minus one. Two <laughs> one fourth. X minus one minus one. Okay, are you ready? That took me a little while to put it in, but here you go. Boom. They're exactly the same. Okay, so this is like one of those rare situations where one equation is actually the same thing. Like there's two different right ways to write that exact same graph. That's pretty cool. I know you guys completely agree. <laughs>